so far, we haven't really said anything about state estimation. And I'd like to mention briefly how that can be done. When we approximate the posterior as Gaussian, like in a nearest neighbor or a PDA filter, the posterior mean is a natural estimate of the state vector. And that is generally what we use. However, in a Gaussian sum filter, where the posterior density is a Gaussian mixture, the choice of estimator may not be as simple. One alternative is to use the minimum mean squared error estimator, which means that we use the posterior mean as our state estimator. As we mentioned in the videos about PDA filtering, the posterior mean is the sum of the mean of the different hypotheses, weighted by the probability of the same hypothesis. Being optimal in terms of mean square error is sometimes what we want, but a possible disadvantage with the posterior mean is that it may yield an estimate in a region where the posterior density is very small. This is particularly true in situations where we have a density with several well-separated peaks. A possible remedy to this is to use an estimator that first finds the hypothesis with the highest weight, here denoted hk star, and then use the posterior mean for that hypothesis as our state estimate. In many cases, this estimator yields estimates in regions where the density takes larger values compared to the posterior mean. We note that both estimators are identical if the posterior is not a mixture but a single Gaussian density. Let us now look at how a Gaussian sum filter may behave in the two simulation examples that we have already used to evaluate the nearest neighbor and PDA filters. We will compare four different densities. The predicted density according to the Gaussian sum filter, which is the red point dashed curve, the exact posterior density, which is the solid black curve, the posterior before we introduce the approximations at time k, p brief, which is a magenta colored dashed curve, and the Gaussian sum filter posterior, which is an orange curve marked with crosses. As you've seen, there are many variations to the Gaussian sum filter. In these simulations, we use a filter that caps the number of hypotheses to five. We could have maintained many more hypotheses, but that would make it difficult to distinguish the Gaussian sum filter from the true posterior in these toy examples. Both at time one and time two, the posterior in black looks identical to the Gaussian filter posterior. At time three and at time four, we can see that the Gaussian sum filter has introduced approximation errors, but these errors again shrink somewhat when we continue to time five and time six. Overall, the Gaussian sum filter approximates the posterior density well in this example. If we compare the same filtering densities in the second scenario, we again note that the Gaussian sum filter looks almost perfect at time one and time two. At times three, four, and five, there is a noticeable difference between the Gaussian sum filter and the exact posterior, but this difference is diminished at time six. Even if the Gaussian sum filter is not perfect, we have seen that it approximates the posterior density significantly better than what the nearest neighbor and PDA filters did in these examples. To summarize, we have learned about Gaussian sum filters, which approximate the posterior as a Gaussian mixture. In the examples that we studied, the Gaussian sum filters approximated the posterior density significantly more accurately than the nearest neighbor and PDA filters. Another nice property is that we can adjust the complexity of the algorithm to the available computational resources, for instance, by maintaining many components or just a few. One disadvantage with the algorithm is that it is a bit more complicated to implement. Also, in order to gain something compared to the nearest neighbor and PDA algorithms, we should definitely maintain more than one component, and this means that it's more computationally demanding. Finally, I would like to point out something important. In the toy examples that we studied here, there was a noticeable difference between the Gaussian sum filter and the simpler algorithms. However, if the scenario is sufficiently simpler, even the nearest neighbor algorithm performs very well. Also, if the scenario is sufficiently more challenging, all algorithms will lose track of the object. It is therefore mostly for medium challenging scenarios that the Gaussian sum filter will shine and yield considerably better performance than nearest neighbor and probabilistic data association.